right, hello everyone. Joker Prime here with my boy Squints. What's up? Uh, we are Tabletop Syndicate. You know, um, trying to get this channel started. Hopefully, bringing you guys some fun, entertaining content. I know, for me personally, when I'm not getting to play things on the tabletop or whatever it may be, sometimes I like to take some time on YouTube and watch other people getting to play. Um, so we have come up with this tournament here. We've set up a 300 point 3v3 tournament. So we decided first decided on the build requirements. So we decided we'd limit it to 300 points and we wanted it to have three and only three characters going against each other. We thought that sounded like a fun um, theme, I guess. Absolutely. And so we each, we built 15 teams each under those requirements. And after we had our 15 teams built, we looked at them and decided to try to seed our top seven on um, how, how strong we thought they were, obviously, what we thought our tops were, just to help us develop the bracket a little bit. We didn't want to do full blind draw, and it helps kind of make sure, at least in the first round, we're playing against each other's teams, not matching up against ourselves. Um, so with the seeding, obviously, it's purely our um, personal opinion. Yeah, it's, it, it becomes pretty difficult to see teams at times because it's hard to judge how strong a team's going to be. So there's a lot of different things that go into how we see teams, and that's kind of what we're going to talk about, why we thought a team would be strong or why it wasn't going to be strong. So this is our intro video to this tournament. We're going to be playing these uh, games out on Roll20 for you to watch and posting these um, following this video. We'll do one of these bracket reviews between each round, kind of recap of the previous round and what we think is going to be happening. So this time we're going to talk about our seeds, like he mentioned, and why they're there, and then what we feel about our matchups. Um like I mentioned, this tournament is going to be played on Roll20, so I'll be doing some videos talking a little bit about Roll20 for those of you who are not familiar, but it's so that we can play some hero clicks online that w became big during COVID, during all the social distancing, and when people couldn't really get together, it was a way to keep the game alive a little bit. Um, so we decided to try it out on here also for us being new to broadcasting and streaming. It was a little bit easier to get some good quality recordings. So that's kind of why we went with this. So I'll let Squints introduce his uh, teams first. All right, so I'm just gonna run through uh, my teams and the builds or just just quickly, which ones are mine? Uh, so, well, so all of his are the ones in red and okay. all of mine are in blue because, um, you know, I'm a little more DC, he's a little more Marvel right. usually and kind of helps that way. So I was gonna say just Kind of mention your seeds and a little bit why uh, you thought – what you thought about them when seeding. Right. Okay, cool. So uh, I guess I'll start with the first seed. Uh, our first seed got buys into the, into the second round, which is why you see um, two of them over there in the second column. Uh, so for me, first seed, I had Latveria. I went ahead and I, I had uh, Latveria seeded first because of all of the – uh, I felt like they had a lot of options and also the pieces that are on that team. Uh, so like the Dr. Fantastic and uh, the Dr. Doom can pop out these Doom bots. Uh, and in fact, the Dr. Doom uh, from and everything from the Liberia, I believe is from the new Fantastic Four set, uh, not the future foundations, but the Fantastic Four set. Um, actually, my, no, actually I do. I have one from the future foundations. It's the, uh, I believe it's the chase um, uh, Franklin Richards. But uh, anyways, they can pop out these Doom bots. No, I think he's from the regular, he's from uh, he's from the regular Fantastic Four. That's right. But they, I just felt with it being restricted to three people, we can only have three people in the build, and so being able to pop out Doom bots that have decent attacks, they have like I think a ten attack for three damage. Um, I felt like I could just basically create a swarm team without having to build a swarm team, and so again, I've, I've played against teams where. Uh, I limited my the number of characters on my team, and they were strong pieces, but they got out actioned. So I thought that having a bunch of dude bots running around causing havoc would be very strong. On top of um, the fact that uh, Ch Chase um, Fr 
Franklin Richards has two stop clicks in a row with very high tag values and damage values. So that was, I thought, very good. And then um, Dr. Fantastic eventually can pop out a pog of Galactus and <laughs> has some pulse wave with a high, high defense value and high damage value. So I thought that would be a little overpowered. And so that's why I seated him first. And then let's see here. So uh, going with my second seed, Frightful 4, I went ahead and I, I built that with a character that I thought was fairly strong. And I've tried him in the past with mixed results. So Blastar from the Fantastic Four set, very strong piece I felt. Um, he has power cosmic, so he can't be outwitted. A lot of times when I build teams, especially against Joker Prime, I'm <laughs> usually pretty concerned about being outwitted because I feel like he finds ways to, to outwit all the time. Go and, Batman. Yeah, pretty much. And so I like characters that can't be outwitted. So I thought he'd be a strong piece uh, on top of the fact that I put um, him with Wizard, one of the new Wizards who has some really good support, Outwit and Perplex, and then um, the Super Scroll. I, I had the Super Scroll. I just got it. Super excited about trying it out. So I felt overall there are a lot of options that that team can have. And um, unfortunately, um, I, I won't know what's going to happen to them, uh, but I'm thinking it'll be pretty strong. I wish I knew more. Uh, let's see here. So then my third seed, right, was, I believe, my, not my Mystics, right. or is yeah. it my Mystics? Yeah. It is, yeah. So Mystics, um, one big reason why I did see it so high is the fact that it has all pieces on that team have the Mystics team ability. So I have Doctor, the Chase Doctor Strange from uh, Avengers, Cap and the Avengers, and I also have uh, Clea from the Earth X set, and I have Loki from the ABPI. Uh, equipped with any gem that I wanted or a gauntlet if I wanted to. All of them have mystics. Uh, I have I have two probs on that team. I have an outwit on that team. So a lot of support built in on top of the fact that Clea um, has a crazy trait where if her or Loki are within four squares and they can see each other, that if they take damage, then the opponent's taking two penetrating damage instead of one because of mystics. So I felt like, hey, if you're hitting those characters, uh, good for you. Number one, it's going to be difficult because there's stealth involved, there's energy energy um, deflection, uh, and they have a very large range. So good luck hitting them. And then if you do hit them, you're going to be taking damage. And so I felt like that was pretty OP. Um, but I also know that if you do hit them, they're going to start crumbling pretty fast. So that's why I didn't see them much higher than three. And then moving on to my fourth seed uh, were my Elders of the Universe. Uh, I really like the elder. I really like the elders of the universe just because um, there's a character on there. I believe it's the possessor who can get rid of out or who can get rid of protected outwit. Again, I I'm pretty cognizant uh, at this point of outwit because I've been brutalized by it so many <laughs> times um, that anytime I can see something that allows me to use outwit, but then on top of that, get rid of my opponent's ability to possibly be protected outwit either through quintessence, power cosmic or just some other way of getting protected from Outwit. So I thought that would be really overpowered. Um, additionally, uh, putting them on the, t so Possessor with Astronomer, Astronomer having just ridiculous range, 11 range. I haven't seen that with any character other than like Green Lanterns or other Lantern characters. Uh, getting to use Prob, aiming through multiple different things. I believe he has, yeah, he has, he has uh, aiming through elevation and hindering. And so, plus the astronomer can TK twice in one turn. And then I have the runner, runner who has hypersonic. So he's a hypersoniker. I feel like hypersonic is probably one of the best speed powers out there. So the, build, the ability to move, attack, and then move. So I felt overall, all of the utility that they had with gems equipped to them would be very strong, but I also knew that they weren't hitting super hard. They were only hitting for three damage a piece. So that's why I didn't see them much higher than that. Plus, they're all power cosmic, meaning that they can't be outwitted. So I knew they'd be strong, um, but I just knew that possibly if I had a team that had Invincible or something, I might not be doing much damage to them. So, all right. So that was my fourth seed, right? Yep. All right, so then my fifth seed, Illuminati, um, hoping to be a pretty fun team. I got the Professor X from the um, Dark Phoenix. The Dark Phoenix, yep, the animated set. And I feel like he's been fun in the past. He can basically give people like influence tokens from nine squares away. He can aim through most everything. And, you know, when a character gets that, he can outwit them. He can possibly pin side them, in cap them. 
Uh, you can also leadership. So if he gives it to one of his friendly characters. So I just felt like I could keep him in the back and do a lot of damage and or just support and keep him fairly safe. Plus, once he takes damage, he becomes pretty strong as far as attack values, damage values. Um, and then on the team with Professor X, I had... Um, Let's see, who do I have? Mr. Fantastic. That's right, I have Mr. Fantastic. He was more of a, a filler, honestly, uh, but he had some pretty good support. Uh, he had some pretty good support in in uh, his dials. And and with him, with those two, I also had Black Bolt. And really, Black Bolt was one of the biggest reasons I wanted to seed them so um, fairly high is because it's the Black Bolt from AVPI with the gem equipped to him. And I believe it's the reality gem that basically allows him to target multiple characters and pin side them uh, with full damage. So he doesn't have to split the damage up. And I felt like that would be overpowered, especially in a 3v3 tournament where if I wanted to in one attack, target all three characters and pin side all of them. So I felt like that would be pretty strong. Um, but I also knew that Professor X and Fanta Mr. Fantastic were kind of easy targets if they don't hit shape change, if they don't hit super senses, that they can get beat up pretty fast. So I was really relying on Black Bolt, which is why he was seated so seated where he was. All right. And then let's see here. I keep on losing count. So, was that my fifth seed? That was your fifth. That was so my let's fifth. just point out six and seven real quick. Yep. Um, your six should be, where's number 12 at? Masters of Evil. Oh, yep. yeah. And then... And Here then I had... Um, oh, wait, then. no, that was your seven. Oh, yeah, you're right. That Masters was of seven. Evil was your seven. Uh, future. 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 Thank your, you. Thank you. Seven. That's right. So Future, I, I like Future just because there was the title character King on there who I felt if he was able to build up enough plot points, he could do multiple attacks in one, one turn, which I felt would be pretty awesome. And also uh, there was Maestro on the team. And Maestro is uh, is pretty gross, uh, obviously, uh, hitting really hard with some good attack values. Um, and so I always like looking for characters that can hit hard. And I feel like Maestro could do that. And I believe I, f I finished that team out with Cable. Cable from the Deadpool set, uh, one of the older sets. Um, uh, it was Deadpool and X-Force. X-Force. Yeah. And that dude can, uh, you know, phase and then he can pin side you for four damage with his own prob. So I felt like that's pretty gross. I could I could definitely get close to one-shotting somebody if I was able to position it correctly. So, uh, but unfortunately, that's all they offered really was doing a lot of damage, not a lot of support other than that. And then Masters of Evil. Last set, yep. Yeah. So Masters of Evil, uh, I ranked them just because I've played Masters of Evil before, and they have proven to be a pretty strong keyword, especially when you play uh, it with the Baron Zemo from the... Spider-Man, uh, superior Spider-Man, or superior, superior foes, foes, the Spider-Man said. And so if you don't know or have never played that Baron Zemo, he gets he, he gives plus one to um, the attack values of all of his friendly characters, and he gives them sidestep. So free movement and a plus one to your attack values is pretty ridiculous. On top of the fact that I teamed him up with Atlas from the Cap and Avengers set, who is fairly cheap, but he can he has like a character trait that allows him to up his his attack value and damage value, which his values are already pretty strong. Um, and and then lastly, there was the en Enchantress from ABPI, who potentially you know this was a bit of a gamble, which is why I didn't see them too high. Uh, she has a power that allows me to roll a D6, and if I roll six or a five, then I get to choose all three of the support. Um, powers. So I could choose Outwit, Perplex, and Prob, and I can use them all. Now, if I roll like a two or three or a four, I can only use two of them. Or if I roll a one or two, I can only use one of them. But either way, she would be able to be a pretty strong support piece. On top of, she also is a hard hitting attack piece because she has like an 11 attack with Pensai for four damage. So I was like, wow, there's an attacker with some ridiculous um, support values. I felt like they could have done some major damage pretty fast. So that's why they got my seed. But I also knew that with a colossal character in Atlas, he's a pretty easy target because <laughs> you can't really hide him. And he's kind of a glass cannon. If you hit him once, he kind of crumbles. So I didn't want to see him too high. But those are my top seven seeds. Yep. You, want me to, you want me to keep running, running through the rest of them? Or you want to uh, reduce your, your top seven? No, I'll just do my the ones we actually seeded. Okay, um, perfect. So for me, my number one seed is Kryptonian. You know, like we said, I am a little more DC heavy. Typically, we both mixed it up a bit. 
a few – the majority of our teams were this side that we normally lean to, but we mixed into the other brand a little bit here. So my uh, one seed again, Kryptonian, it's got Superman Prime, the uh, con exclusive or prize, the WizKids Superman Prime with the uh, sun – in the shape of the Superman symbol behind him. Pretty, pretty ridiculous figure. He's got a lot going on. So that's him with Mr. Oz, um, who can use probability control through everything from 12 squares away, um, with Superman Prime also getting his own probes. There's a big reason that team's number one for me, and they also have a Supergirl from the Justice League Unlimited set. Haven't tried her out before. I wanted to mix up my Kryptonia a little bit. So that's why I threw her on there. There's a few different options for my Kryptonian team, but that's what I landed on. And I'm excited to see how they do. I, I feel like it'll be really strong, but there's also things that make me a little nervous in this tournament, just with everything going on. You know, his Avengers team playing against my Justice Society, playing into them makes me a little nervous there. Um, some other things like that, but we'll see how it goes. Um, so my two seed is my monster team, which um, it's comprised of Parasite from Justice League Unlimited, Raven from Rebirth, and then um, Black Adam from Rebirth. So first of all, yes, Black Adam and Parasite are both prime, prime, excuse me, prime characters. So normally you could only have one of those on a team, but we bend some of the rules every once in a while in casual. So the team I really wanted to try out together. So... Um, I threw them together. I've got high hopes for them. I think they've got some potential to be really gross. Parasite is a vampire, so he gets to heal up above his starting line and to become even stronger and gets to steal powers. Raven can carry the whole team. And uh, Black Adam is a pretty hard hitter with a lot of movement on his own. So a lot going on there, plus some mystics. So I'm excited for that team. High hopes there. But I... Didn't think they could take on my Kryptonians. That's why they're my two seed. My three seed is up here, Codex. So there's one of my Marvel teams already. Is my three seed. I could have built it a little bit stronger. I thought about trying to build around Absolute Carnage from the Spider-Man and Venom Absolute Carnage set. He is a nasty piece. But I went with Noel with his Necro Sword and um, Agent Anti-Venom. And then, um, why am I blanking on my third? Uh, uh, you said Andrew, Andrew, Venom. Oh, it was uh, Venom Doctor Strange. Was yes, my, uh, yes. Sorry, because I think, do you have do you have sideline characters on that team? Well, so, sort of, yeah. Okay. Agent, uh, or sorry, um, Venom Doctor Strange, when he hits, he can call in a Venom character for that okay. turn. So it's... A little bit of a call in. Uh, I remember. I remember seeing some of those pieces. We're able to call in. So I've I've got um, Venom Groot and Venom Ghost Spider on my sideline there, so he could potentially call them in when he hits somebody. But Noel's pretty nasty. He got some placement, ignore shape change, and super senses, and just some good stuff going on there. So three seed with them. I think even with that absolute carnage, I think it's a pretty strong team. Four seed for me, let me find it here, is my Justice League International team. That is Booster Gold from the Justice League Unlimited set. Um, Martian Manhunter Rare from that same set. And then Skeets from, he is a WizKids. Uh, Exclusive? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Or a prize piece or something. Yeah, something like that, a con exclusive something. He is... Uh, Tiny size, he gives a lot of support to Booster Gold, who is really strong on his own. Then Martian Manhunter is, uh, you know, those two are kind of range. Martian Manhunter helps give him some close, and he's kind of hard to hit. So uh, I've played that Booster Gold with that Skeets before, and it is just really gross potential. Skeets has police team abilities, so he can take down your opponent's defense by one. And then by being next to Booster Gold, his – Booster Gold's attack is automatically plus two. And then he also has enhancements, so Booster Gold's damage is up one. All of that just from being adjacent to Skeets. So uh, 
you know, it sounds like a lot. It it has some limitations. That's one of the reasons it's so low for me. I definitely think that the, all the seeds above it could take it on. But it's a fun team with some strong stuff. Um, so that was, what, four? Mm-hmm. Five is uh, up here, my Teen Titans. Same thing with Teen Titans. Um, I'll back up just a step real quick. When we talked about seeding these, it's all based on our opinions. So it's mostly based on our – Previous experience with these pieces. So all of our seeded teams have pieces that we've probably played multiple times before and had success with. That's why that's basically all we have to go off of when we seed these things, either the potential we see in it or what we've done with it before. So there could be a team that looks even stronger than some of these seeds and maybe it should be seeded over them, but I don't have as much experience or I don't feel like I play their mechanics as well. So that's kind of why I went with this. So my number five is Teen Titans with Super. It's all from Rebirth. It's um, Starfire, Superboy, and Robin, um, Damian Wayne on his Goliath, the big red bat dog thing. And uh, I think this team is pretty strong. It's got some good stuff going on again. Uh Starfire, I, th- I think, was being played meta for a bit, or people were really after her. I know she was kind of hard to get at first. Um, we don't really play meta. We try to keep up with it a little bit, so can't say a lot towards that. But she's a uh, hypersoniker and um, quintessence. She uh, is a flyer. And then Robin is giant size. Superboy is a flyer. Superboy can charge for like seven, hitting hard, and him and Robin give each other – they share their team abilities when they're close enough. So they both get Superman and Batman team abilities when they're close to each other. So hard-hitting potential there. Um, Six lead now. Six is going to be White Lanterns. Uh, Big fan of the Lanterns. All of them. War of Light set. One of my favorites. I wasn't playing when all that happened, but I've bought up just about as much of it as I could at this point. Uh, so I can play pretty much any of the Lantern Cores. So White Lantern Core, these guys are fairly new to me. I just recently uh, acquired a few of these pieces. So it is White Lantern Batman, White Lantern Swamp Thing, and um, I... Because of the point value, I definitely wanted to play those two. I couldn't fit another true White Lantern on it, so I put Kyle Rayner, the um, newer uh, OP kit Kyle Lanner, or Kyle Rayner that can carry flyers and uh, things like that. So put him on there, being able to fit another White Lantern, I couldn't really work it out for what I wanted to play. Swamp Thing... Cool stuff can leave terrain all over the field. Um, Batman, I'm just a big fan of him. Can't remember everything he has off the top of my head, but I just really wanted to give him a try, and that's one of my favorite sculpts, I think, of all time. Yeah, it's an amazing sculpt, uh, for sure. Got some bat constructs coming out behind him and stuff like that, so he's pretty sweet looking. And then my seven seed is my Sinestro Core. Uh, another so, lantern team. Yep, <laughs> no, another lantern team. I don't actually have a Sinestro on it, but I have Kyle Rayner Parallax, Despotelis, and Bedovian. So Kyle Rayner Parallax is a beast. I have um, – I don't know that I've played him as much as the other Parallax that's Hal Jordan – I have never tried Despotelis out before, but he's got some cool stuff potentially, so I wanted to give him a try. And then um, Bedovian, I've played a little bit. He's one of my favorite like support type. I don't know if I'd say support, but he's one of my favorite fillers for a Sinestro Core team. He's got some kind of fun uh, traits and special abilities. So, again, big fan of the storyline for the Lanterns and everything like that. So almost every time uh, – We've done a few of these tournaments before, and you can usually find a Lantern team from me in these yeah, tournaments. Easily. <laughs> so that that's my top seven. 
Uh, we'll see how it goes. I think in the in the later videos, what we could do is we could introduce each individual piece, maybe um, just in case we went over some of those and you're not sure what the pieces are. Uh, we can go over those later in another video. Um, and we'll we'll talk a little bit about them while we're playing during yeah. the matches. Um, we mentioned things about them and we try to give a rundown of what's going on as if basically to target a wide variety of, so hopefully more experienced click players don't get annoyed by it. <laughs> and, but hopefully people, sure that, we'll, lots of mistakes will be made. Yeah. But. Hopefully some people that aren't as familiar with some of the pieces can follow along better based on us going over it while we play too. Yeah. I mean, really just to reiterate what you were saying, as far as seating, um, We've, we've played clicks for a while now, and when we kind of just go off of uh, what what has worked for us in the past and what we perceive to be good. So, I mean, for example, I don't know if you've caught, but, I mean, Joker Prime a few times mentioned in his teams having a carry ability, and that's something that I've found um, that Joker Prime likes to put on his teams that I've <laughs> underestimated is the ability to carry multiple characters on the first turn and, and then not be tokened up for the second turn. So that's something he normally puts in and he finds very valuable and has worked pretty good. For me, uh, and I also mentioned he likes to use Outwit, and I just absolutely despise Outwit now because I've been <laughs> brutalized multiple times by Outwit. And stealth. And, yeah, and stealth. And so, I mean, I'm I'm traditionally like a big big fan of Hulk, and I when I got into clicks, I thought Hulk would be unstoppable, and he just got obliterated <laughs> by Outwit multiple times. So when I'm looking at building my teams, I'm, I'm looking more for characters that can hit really hard um, or can uh, do something fun. Uh, for free, free actions are pretty, pretty big. I was pretty bad at building with support, and I feel like Joker Prime had more support than I did in most of my teams. And so now, when I'm building teams, if I'm going to see them high, then normally it's because I think they have a lot of support behind them, like Outwit, Probs, uh, Perplexes, and other various things that make it more difficult to hit your characters. Um, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, it's it's going to be interesting to see if our seeds are correct or or what happens. Yeah, excited to get into this. Like I said, just from we, – we seated our top seven. I filled them in their places, and then everyone else got randomly drawn in. Uh, we won't go too much into the matchups on this one. On later ones, we will because we're not as familiar with them right now. There's a few things that look scary, but we haven't actually seen each other's teams yet, and this video is running a little longer than we had intended. But you'll get to see the matchups play out, and in the future bracket reviews, we'll talk about matchups and break down some more things about what's happening in the bracket. So thanks. I hope um, you enjoyed this. We're big fans of brackets and breaking it down and seeing how things pan out. That's part of why we're doing this. And so you can follow along with the tournament if you're interested. We're going to be posting all the matches. Um as we play them so you can follow along and actually watch our matches as well, you know, in order and see who comes out to the end, see what you think is going to happen. I mean, we'll do like a March um, Madness type thing with for they, their brackets. Maybe eventually. <laughs> I mean, but uh, yeah, you, if, if you're as big into brackets and kind of following along with them and seeing how things pan out as we are, that's something you could do. But uh, appreciate it again. Joker Prime and Squints with Tabletop Syndicate. We'll see you next time. See ya.